Salam. Salam ta. Hina Yestalim. I am Brother Spence. On the seventh day of Matzah. Mm. The seventh day of unleavened bread. As you see, I and I burn the seven candle lights, the seven branches of the menorah last night on the blessed eve of the true seventh day of unleavened bread, according to Jah's feasts, according to Hashem's feasts, we have the seven lights, the seven chakras. Ionite Temple. Rabbi Yahushua, and to his majesty, the King of Kings, in Yahshua HaMashiach, aka Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord. Says the body is the temple. These physical bodies of flesh and blood is the temple. Of Hashem's spirit, the foundation of Jah love, the heart chakra, right? Seven lights, seven branches, in which Christ Yahushua dwells. This I, Eliyash, not The seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Then we have the Mesco, the true cross of Yahweh's kingdom, or Jah's kingdom. The true Mesco, or the true cross of Yahushua, Hamoshiach, aka Jesus Christ, I and I, Lord and Savior. That is our Lord and Savior. An advocate to Yahweh, or Jehovah, our Heavenly Father, and our Elohim. Amen. Within Ionai Temple, both spiritually, metaphysically, and literally, in the physical, we have the Blessed Tree of Life. Jah Life Tree, that Kabbalah or that Kabbalistic Tree of Life, both the Mescal, the original true Orthodox Christian cross, and the menorah have that divine, symbolic, and mystic connection. That divine mystical connection with I and I temple. So when we say Eliai Selassiei, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, with the Ruach Hakodesh, aka the Memphis Kadus, that true set apart spirit. The Allah Iris within, we have that oneness as above, so below, from within. Of course, I and I burn the ancients, we burn the incense, the sacred herb, as the lamb's bread for seven days after Pesach or Passover. During Pasaka, as we also say Ethiopically, the Pasaka resurrection season, many other fellow Orthodox Christians say Easter in the divine light. Yes, I. In Jah, divine light of the East Star, not East Star, 
So that pagan, over-commercialized Easter or so-called Easter, Easter egg baskets, the so-called Easter bunny, all that nonsense. Marked safe from Easter or pagan Easter shenanigans. Now, according to the original Ethiopian Orthodox Christian faith, or that true Christian faith, that Tawahado liberty, many of I and I wave the sheets of fresh branches, the sheath of the branches symbolizing first fruits on the morrow after Shabbat, or that true seven day Sabbath, your so called Saturday, the next morrow or the next day being so called Sunday. And then we have the more relevant. Tomorrow after Shabbat, which will be this coming Sabbath, this coming seven day Sunbit, the morrow after this coming Saturday, so called Sunday of the next Shabbat, this coming weekend, we also wave the sheaves of fresh branches and loaves of leavened bread. After today, after tonight, I and I can eat regular. Leaven bread and other foods with leaven, symbolic for the first exodus of Ja people. Sai. In this modern day exodus, for all of us, whether ethnic Jew, that is ethnic Yehudi or ethnic Hebrew Israelites of any of the original 12 tribes according to lineage, whether Falasha, Ethiopian Hebrew or Ethiopian Jew or modern day Eurocentric of Jewish descent, whether Yemenite or Sephardic or Ashkenazi, Yahweh's kingdom or Jah's kingdom is a hardical kingdom. Jew or Gentile, according to flesh, to be born again, begotten again, and grafted into Hashem's kingdom through Messiah. Right, so we have the in the philosophical sense doesn't really have to do with bun and cheese, flying kites, yeah. not even the Easter bunny, but it has to do with the death, the crucifixion, the suffering, and the resurrection of uh, who the world calls Jesus. That's Easter now, and Easter is about Jesus. Yeah? East star ain't necessarily about Christ, but it's East about star. Jesus. East right. star. No, East star. <clears throat> but Fasica is more original Ethiopian Orthodox Christians and fulfilled Israelites, fellow Nazarenes, acknowledged as the resurrection in this divine connection of Pesach or Passover, blessed resurrection. Passover season and in this seventh day of matzah or seven days of unleavened bread. Why? The original Hebrew Israelites in the actual geographical land of Mitzrayim, that physical land of ancient and modern day Egypt, which was once the great empire of Kemet. Stemming from that origin to the highlands of Kush, or Ethiopia, the actual heartland of Mother Africa and parts of Arabia and the Middle East as well. But the matzah or unleavened bread the Israelites took as they fleed Egypt. That's right. They fleed even Goshen to their quarters of protection despite their oppression or despite the downpression laid heavily upon them by the careless Egyptians. Not all Egyptians, not all Mitzrites, and a mixed multitude of different ethnicities and nationalities 
was grafted in to be faithful Israelites, adopted Hebrews, the proselytes of lineage grafted in. A mixed multitude went with the original ethnic faithful Hebrew Israelites who listened to the great prophet Moshe. They, list, they listened to Moses, Selika. They listened to Moshe and to Aaron, the high priest. They listened to Yahweh's commandments. They listened to Jah speak in the Old Covenant times through Moshe and through the prophet Moses and his biological brother, Aaron, or Aaron, as you pronounce in English today, but Aaron and Moshe, prophets and priests in that oneness of Ha'alohim and us as vessels, Ha'alohim and his Messiah, or his angel, as Ha'alohim and the supreme angel named Yahuwah, Jehovah, the pre-incarnate Yahshua, the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ, before Mashiach in the first advent, in that first incarnation, the word becomes flesh. The word became flesh and lived amongst us in Johannan, the gospel according to St. John. Johannan says, the word became flesh, Ha'alohim, was with the Word. The Word was with Elohim. The Word was Elohim. And that perfect lightness incarnate became flesh. Now the matzah, or unleavened bread, once again, going back to the first exodus, in the time of the prophet Moses, or Musa, and the faithful Hebrew Israelites, Amongst the original 12 tribes that listened to the prophet and the priest, they recognized the manifestation of Ha'alohim or Alahayim with them at that time, about to deliver them and already being in the process of delivering them from downpression and brutal slavery and wickedness in the hands of a wicked pharaoh, not the earlier dynasties of ancient Kemet or even so-called Egypt. And so in Mitzrayim, or Egypt, which is connection, or has that connection with uh, bondage. Other meanings of Mitzrayim mean something else, but it has a connection that leads to bondage. Right? Ancient Kemet was once a Yahuwah, or Jehovah-based faith. Keep that in mind. You know? Just like, at one point in time... Despite the lures of wicked Babylon system and white supremacy, you had a melting pot nation that was somewhat of a Christian-based uh, freedom of religion, Christian-based uh, you know country on this earth. Even though it was founded by evil, genocide, slavery, part of that generational curse infused with the evil of white supremacy. So we burn out white supremacy. We burn out white supremacy. You know, any kind of supremacy of any particular, you know, color of people or nationality. But we do recognize the original Hebrew Israelites, and the anointed ones, and those of ancient Kush, and ancient Kemet, were of African descent and are of African descent. But Yahweh's kingdom, or Jah's kingdom, at the same time, you know, God's kingdom in Christ Jesus is universal. First to the ethnic Yehudi, then to the Gentiles. The mixed multitude came out of bondage, out of Egypt, physically. They came out physically in that first exodus, but first they had to come out mentally and spiritually, right? So now we have to come out by receiving the Passover lamb, spiritually, prophetically, and figuratively speaking, <clears throat> even metaphysically speaking, on a certain level, we, you know, put the blood of the covenants, we spread the blood of the covenants, the precious blood of the Lamb, every day on our doorposts, beside, over our temple, through the blood of Yeshua, the blood of Jesus Christ. Then, we still keep these commandments 
and they've renewed covenants, New Testament sense, and that Christ mind, and more of that true mind of Messiah, and fulfillments of the Torah and the prophets, of course, but in that fulfilled spirit of Christ, or of Messiah, even more so, to recognize our identity, our true identity, whether we're ethnic Jew or Gentile, according to flesh, so-called black, white, brown, yellow. We don't get caught up in the root of all evil, the love of money, greed. That love of money leads to greed, selfishness, wickedness. We cannot serve two masters. We cannot serve two masters. So now let's go into, with that being said, that basic Judaic or Hebraic mindset and more of that true Christian faith. Let's realize that the first Talmudim, the original 12 disciples of Christ Jesus or Yeshua HaMashiach were Yahudim. It's part of their culture, their faith, their mindset. Now comes the resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach, their rabbi as Mashiach, the true Messiah in the first advent, I think. See the gospel, the Brahadasha, as we should say Hebraically, which is the renewed covenant with the Hadith Kedan, as many of I and I also say Ethiopically, in the Amharic, the Hadith Kedan, but the Brahadasha, as we should say in the Hebrew, or the renewed covenant, or good news gospel of Yeshua, aka Jesus Christ, according to Lucas. According to St. Luke, or Lucas, in his original Hebrew pronunciation of his name, Rabbi Lucas, says in St. Luke, chapter 22, in the Gospels, in your Bibles, it says, in the festival of Matzah, now this is a uh, scriptures version of the Bible, but the Feast of Unleavened Bread, as many of your English translations might say, but the festival of Matzo Junior, which is called Pesach or Passover, before the first day of Matzo or Passover, we had last week, last Shabbat. But in this past seven days, we're at the final seventh day. That final seventh day of Matzo, right here, right now. Okay. Even right here, right now, I've taken the day off from my occupation at Roanoke City Schools to be here to keep. Yahweh's commandments, to love and keep Yah's commandments. This takes time and growth, but if we do grow, put that discipline, put in that work through faith and good intentions to put in that work and study to show I and I self approved, 2 Timothy 2 and 15, as a worksman, not being ashamed, as a true worksman, not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. The word of truth, Jah word and truth, from Genesis to Revelation. It takes meditation, it takes study. All right, so the festival of Matzah drew near, which is called Passover, and the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to kill him, how to capture him. For they feared the people who were following him, some of the people, a great number of the people recognizing him as Mashiach, as the true Messiah. In the first advent and the Passover lamb. But even that mystery was not revealed to the original Talmudim. It was not revealed to the original Talmudim or disciples until after the resurrection. But we see now on the seventh day, where the ones acknowledge the actual resurrection day of Yeshua or Jesus Christ. To be on so-called Easter Sunday or the Sabbath, so-called Saturday, or whatever day it might be for that particular cycle. Know this, by the seventh day of unleavened bread is done. So let's read about the resurrection of Yahshua HaMashiach. Uh, Lucas chapter 24. But on day one of the first Shabuah, it's again, St. Luke or Lucas, chapter 24. On day one of the week at early dawn, 
They came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And having entered, they did not find the body of the master Yahushua, not find the body of Rabbi Yeshua or Jesus. It came to be, as they were perplexed about this, that see, two men stood by them in glittering garments, the dazzling white garments, the messengers or angels. Verse 5, and becoming frightened and bowing their faces to the earth, he said to them, Why do you seek the living amongst the dead? He is not here, but has been raised up. Hallelujah. Remember how we spoke to you when we were still in Galilee, or Galil, as this pronunciation is written in these verses. Verse 7, by number of 7, saying, How we spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, the son of Adam, or the son of man, has to be delivered into the hands of sinners and be impaled or crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and having returned from the tomb, they reported all this to the eleven disciples, the eleven Talmudim that were left after Judas or Yehudas. And having returned from the tomb, they reported all this to the eleven and to the rest of the disciples. Mm -hmm. It was Miriam from Magdala and Johanna and Miriam, the mother of Yaakov, and the rest of them who told this to the emissaries of the other disciples. Hmm. Verse 11, and their words appeared to them to be nonsense, and they did not believe them. Verse 12, but Kepha, many other translations will be Peter, but his original Hebrew name, Kepha, arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen wrappings lying by themselves, and he went away home marveling at what took place, and see, two of them were going that same day to a village called Emmaus. The Emmaus walk that many do in more genuine Christian churches today. That village called Emmaus, which was 60 stadia from Jerusalem. It was only so many miles from Jerusalem. And see, two of them were going that same day to the village called Emmaus. And they were talking to each other of all which had taken place. The Yeshua, their Lord, the ultimate master teacher, their rabbi, the one true rabbi of all rabbis. The one true prophet of all prophets, been betrayed, crucified upon the cross, upon the stake. Sad. And it came to be as they were talking and reasoning, verse 15, that Yeshua, or Jesus himself, drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained. They did not know him. Their eyes were restrained. They could not recognize him 100% when they first saw him. And he said to them, What are these words you are exchanging with each other as you are walking? And are you sad? And the one whose name was Cleophas answering to him, Are you the lone visitor in Jerusalem who does not know what took place in these days? And he said to them, What? And they said to him, Concerning Yahushua of Nazareth, of Jesus of Nazareth, who was the prophet, mighty indeed, and word before Ha'alohim, and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and impaled him. They crucified him. Verse 21. We, however, are expecting that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. But besides all this, the day is the third day since these matters took place. Verse 22. For certain women of ours who arrived at the tomb early also astonished us. They did not find his body. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. 
Galen. Verse 24. And some of those with us went to the tomb and found it, as also the woman had said, but they did not see him. And he said to them, O thoughtless ones, mercy, Jack. O thoughtless ones, O slow and to believe in all the prophets have spoken. Okay. Some of those, let's back it up to verse 24. Some of those went with us to the tomb and found it. And also the women had said they did not see him. And he said to them, O thoughtless ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for Hamashiach or for the Messiah to suffer these and to enter into his esteem? It's part of prophecy. Verse 27. And beginning at Moshe, the great prophet Moses, and all the prophets, he was explaining to them in all the scriptures the matters concerning himself. Hallelujah. He was taking that time to put in that work. For well, Yahushua is the living word made flesh. But he was teaching the disciples to put in that work. As it is written in Timotheus or 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. We must study to connect the dots from better sheep or Genesis to Revelation and so forth. Back then they had the Tanakh scriptures and the Torah scriptures. They were documenting the Brihadasha or gospel in this time. Right, so he helped them connect the dots from the Torah, um, the Naveen or the prophets, the Kedavim, the sacred writings and prophecies. So we have to connect the dots of Torah within the Old Testament to the Good News Gospel or Brahadasha of Yeshua HaMashiach, that Good News Gospel according to Jesus Christ. And make that divine connection with Torah and Yahshua HaMashiach, the final Passover lamb. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. It's on or Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon, symbolizing the dragon serpent in the spiritual sense, being of Hasatan and his minions, the fallen ones, the spirits of darkness, of the demons and duffies and gen spirits of darkness and death. Says the dragon was enraged with the woman. The woman. Many of I and I say woman, but the woman prophetically in this sense is I and I, both fellow brethren and sisters of Yahweh's kingdom. That core body of Christ, Yeshua, who is majesty in Christ, who is Yah's kingdom. People of all nationalities, first of the ethnic Yehudi, the Ethiopian Hebrew Yehudi, or the Hebrew Israelites of all 12 tribes, then to the Gentile, according to lineage, all of us grafted into Israel, that poor body of Messiah. It says, the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to fight with the remnant to perceive those guarding and keeping the commandments of Ha'alohim. Was keeping Josh's commandments and possessing the true witness and the true testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach. That is the true testimony of Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's the love. Chapter 14, verse 12. says, Hear the endurance. Let's say it the Most High Yahweh. Yeah. Rest of our eyes. Verse 12, here is the endurance of the set apart ones. Here are those guarding and keeping the commandments of Ha'alohim, that's the commandments of Almighty God, and the true faith of Yahshua HaMashiach, and through His majesty in Christ, Yahshua. But also rightfully take upon that new name, that precious name, let's keep God's commandments, with the true testimony of His Christ. Yahshua HaMashiach, Amosi, or the Messiah in the first advent. The anointed Christ, or Christos, in the first advent. The love. That's what keeps that full hedge of protection through Jah's protection in these last of last days. You have a lot of crazy stuff going on. 
I have to address the bad. Sing it, man. You can see the vehicle the shooter drove. That shooting in Nashville, Nashville last month. Driving up in the parking lot here. The so-called Christian school. Where's the hedge of protection uh, the there? This was released just... President Donald Trump pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. We had that going on. That's a poor payback. moment in American politics. No... Russian official. So while that was going on behind the scenes, we have Russia and China settle together for a new currency to break the U.S. dollar. Mr. Babakov left open the idea of a united currency emerging within the BRICS, possibly backed by gold. That's what the banks are only allowing the people to take out a hundred to two hundred dollars a day from their deposits. Wow, that's it. By Muslims and Jews, and fought with Palestinians. It's there in Jerusalem. Other attacks in the region were the mosque. Also major Why? Celebrating important Why? This week. Charlie Daggett has more on the disturbing. So the unity of Christians and Jews. Cell phone from the Muslims. It appears to show Israeli riot police pummeling worshippers with batons. Who is behind this? Firing grenades and rubber bullets. Lebanon, shooting rockets at Israel, Palestinians shooting rockets, Zionist power shooting rockets back at them. Hmm. What tensions with Iran? The Israeli state, the Zionist powers, getting crazy. A 911 call reported gunfire at Old National Bank just after 8.30 Monday morning. Several officers were there within three minutes, and the chief says they didn't hesitate. And for my LMPD... Israel's neck. Israel's. Take the commandments of God and have the witness of Jesus Christ. 